Well, I have a great surprise for you. Hallelujah. I asked a couple weeks ago, I asked uh, Brother Dustin if he would come and bring the word. Uh, the thing that he's preached several times here, and it's always when I'm gone. And I never get to really enjoy it in person. So I thought, why not ask him to come preach when I'm here? So praise the Lord. So give the Lord a hand for, oh, we need to, do we release the kids? Okay, the kids are gone. Give a great big hand to the Lord for Dustin Robinson. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Well, I consider it an honor and a privilege to be able to bring the word to you today, especially in front of my pastors. Um, I have a word that the Lord has spoken to me a few weeks ago. Bear with me a minute while I get this situated. Uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, I, I asked the Lord, how, what is this word for? And this was two weeks ago. And then pastor came to me and said, I want you to preach. I said, no wonder you told me about that. So I was going through things this morning. And the Lord has been speaking to me um, quite a bit here lately. And I know it's regards to our church and who we are as a body. And so um, this word today, I, I know Pastor's been preaching on, I think a few weeks ago, we continued with Faith Camp, which has been, by the way, the best teaching I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> so I want you to know that, that is just uh, so good, and you can go as long as you want with that. So um, in the next year, yeah, we'll be camping until next spring. I'm fine. Um, Larry, is, where's Larry? Can you give me some water, please? Um, I want to start off. So um, I have a few places. Thank you. Thank you. I have a few places I'd like to go. But today's uh, message basically is going to be about loving the Lord God with all of your mind. You know that we are a three-part being. We are a spirit that lives in a body, and we possess a soul or a mind and an intellect. So we're going to be dealing with that today. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's pray. Let's open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning we acknowledge you, that you are the creator of heaven and earth. We give our lives to you. We make mention of your name daily in our lives. For the name of Jesus is the name that heals every disease, that sets every captive free. And today, this morning... As we acknowledge you, Father, we trust you that that name will set us free. We trust you that the word that we hear will set us free. And Father, we thank you for it and we give you honor for it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We've got quite a few people here. So this is good. I think you all are going to get something out of this. Tyler. It's good to see you two here. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. Um, let's start off in Matthew. If everybody's got your Bibles, who here, first of all, does not have a Bible? Raise your hand. Doesn't own one. Doesn't have one. Doesn't own one. Okay, everybody's got a Bible. Okay, no excuses for not following along in the Word. Amen? We all have a Bible that we can use. So if, if that's a problem, let us know so we can get you one. Matthew chapter 20, let's start off. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. We're going to start off with this scripture. And Jesus is talking to the people, and he says this. Jesus answered him and said, Love the Lord God with every passion of your heart, with all the energy of your being, and with every thought that is within you. Every thought. That is within you. Can you imagine loving Jesus with every thought that is within you? It's a, it, it, it may seem difficult because we think many thoughts throughout our days, right? We have lots of things to think about, right? We have lots of work to do. We have lots of things to manage. We have lots of worldly things to do to, to survive in this earth. Amen? But God is a supernatural God. And when He asks us to do something, it's not going to be something natural. It's going to be supernatural. So He says you can love Him with all your mind and with all your thoughts. Amen? So that's our aim. Our aim is to love the Lord God with every thought 
that is within us. That is our goal. And it, it, it's not, it's not going to be a burden for us. This is going to come easy because we're people of faith, right? We're people that can do things, not people that can't. Amen? We're the can folks, right? We have canned goods. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's start off with Romans. Let's go into Romans. Uh, there's going to be two parts to this message this morning. Let me just real quick introduce to you a little bit about me and what you may receive from me. Um, I come from a ministry where the apostolic anointing is very strong. I came from Rod Parsley Ministries. I went to Bible college there. So I've received uh, an anointing coming down through that ministry. And, and so the, the apostolic ministry is very strong on Rod Parsley. It came from Lester Summerall, and it's been transferred to me. Uh, it also has the preaching and deliverance ministry has also been delivered into me, and I've received that through uh, the laying on of hands many times. Um, it shouldn't take that many, but sometimes it, it, it takes a few for people, you know. So I was one of those. But nevertheless, so you may get that from me, so you can expect those things. Now, I'm not here to brag or emphasize about who I am or what I can do. This is about Jesus. This is what He does for us. He gives us things. And He blesses us with things. Amen? And thank God for that. Or we wouldn't survive. Amen? So, just a little knowledge there for you. Romans 15, 3 through 5. And we're going to read that in the message translation. Um, I want to read all this. In the message. So if you have your Bibles, please follow along. That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles, but waded right in and helped out. I took on the troubles of the troubled, is the way the scripture puts it. Even if it was written in scripture long ago, you can be sure it's written for us. God wants the combination of his steady, constant calling. And warm personal counsel, isn't that good? Warm personal counsel in Scripture to come to characterize us, keeping us alert for whatever He will do next. May our dependably steady and warmly personal God develop maturity in you so that you get along with each other as well as Jesus gets along with us all. Then we'll all be a choir, not our voices only, but our very lives singing in harmony in a stunning anthem to the God and Father of our Master Jesus. Amen? That's some good word right there. I tend to read that message, and it just brings out some things that give us some understanding. Amen? Isn't that good? So what I want to emphasize on here is, in the first part of this, is that we are, we are people that are supposed to move and being and have our being together. We are people that are supposed to walk in unity. This is where the power comes from. Now, we can be blessed and endowed individually, amen, and we are. But it's when you come together in unity is when the Holy Ghost and the power of God is going to move in this earth. Amen? Because that's how it was in the body, in Acts. That's how it was. They were all in unity. They all thought the same thing. Amen? You can think the same thing. It's okay. We don't have to be separated by what we think. It's okay, we're all individuals anyway. So we can think the same thing. I'm going to go through a lot of scripture with you guys today. I hope you're ready. So take note. Uh, Philippians 1.27. Let's go there. This is going to be in the New King James. And I would turn there, but for lack of time, I think I would stall too long before uh, we read, and I just don't want you all sitting there. If you can get there faster, fine. But uh, thank you for being quick on the screen. Only let your conduct, this is Philippians 1.27, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in what? Why is he saying this? Because there's a purpose behind this. This is why he's saying this. That you stand fast in one spirit. With what? One mind, one mind, amen, one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's our goal. We are to strive together with one mind. It's not going to be easy all the time, 
But together, with one mind, we can do anything. Amen? We can take the mountain. We can take the mountain. We can do it. The, you don't have this. Let me go there real quick. And um, I'm gonna, let's all turn to Joshua real quick back here. Oh, come on now. Get stuck in the passion. And the Lord spoke to me this morning in regards to this. Joshua chapter 6, verse 10. I'm going to read this out of the New King James. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, you shall, not, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice. Nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout. Then you shall shout. This is when the children of Israel are going to take Jericho, right? We all probably know this. We've read it. So Joshua tells them, these people have to be in unity. They have to be. If your leader tells you not to speak, and you go and whisper in the dark on your bed because you think you can, or he may not hear you, you better think again. Right? 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 It, when, he, when Joshua commanded them not to speak, it was for a purpose. Amen? He didn't just tell them not to speak because he doesn't want to hear their voice. He did tell them not to speak because there's something happening in the Spirit when they're not speaking. When they're obeying the Word, there's something happening. We don't always have to know everything, right? We just have to obey the Word. Amen? And God will do it. We have to believe and trust that God will do it. If we trust Him, He'll do it. But we also have to be in unity. This is key. And this is what we're going through today. Unity is key in our relationship, not only with each other, but in our relationship with God. If we're not in unity and we don't walk together in this life, we will not fulfill the blessing. The blessing will not be fulfilled in our lives. It's not going to happen. That's why the church is where it's at today. Amen? There's too many divisions. There's too many people not in unity. They don't think the same thing. Right? They don't think the same way. They want to do their own thing. But we're not like that. Amen? Faith by Fellowship's a church that what? We get along. We have mercy. We have love. We walk in love and kindness. And we're able. We're able to agree. We're able to not agree at some point. Right? With the wrong things. But we're able to agree. And with those that are dis in a disagreement out there, the other churches and lots of other... Who, I mean, there's a lots of people that claim to know Jesus. But they want to do their own thing. Could you imagine if these other churches came and joined up with the people at uh, Jericho? <laughs> that wall would have never fell. They would have never gotten that city. Just saying. The word mind in Philippians 1.27, the me, it, it means in the Strong's, the rational and immortal soul or the spirit or the breath. So the mind. In this scripture, it's talking about your spirit mind, which you do have. The Bible says you have the mind of Christ. Your natural mind, the Bible talks about the natural mind being joined with the law. And many times Paul said the law is passing away. The law is to be done away with. That natural mind is connected to that law. It wants to work. It wants to do. It wants to accomplish these things that it was, it was you know, supposed to do under the law, which didn't do anything. But Jesus came not only to fulfill the law, but to propel us in to a new covenant. Amen? Hallelujah. Get, get, roll back there. One, roll back on the last one you were there. Right here, with one mind. What's the next word say? With one mind, what? Striving together. How are you supposed to strive together? Tell me how that works. That's right. With one mind and one spirit, you strive together. If you're not with one mind and one spirit, you ain't doing no striving. You may be striving, but you ain't getting nowhere. You ain't getting nowhere. It may be really, really hard 
to strive if, if, if you're not in one mind and one spirit, especially with your, pe- with your people, right? Why did these, why did these, why does the Taliban have, have so much power right now, have so much authority over there? They're in unity. And these are a bunch of scoundrels. Could you imagine if the glory of God and the righteousness of the church was in unity? They wouldn't have a chance. We could speak a word and they would fall. Amen. Striving together. Striving together. This statement in the Strong's means to seek something jointly or to labor with together for something. Working together. I choose to work with you. I choose to work with you. And hopefully you choose to work with me. Because I know we're not perfect. But we can strive together to be perfect. Amen. If we all have one goal in life, and that's to walk in unity with my brothers and sisters, for God's sake, for Christ. Amen to that. That's a good thing to want out of life. That's the most important thing to want out of life. Amen? Because we're going to be together forever. Forever. That's a long time. You know? Forever is a long, long time. I mean, we haven't even scratched the surface, like that song says. We haven't even scratched the surface. I mean, we're just a, a, not even, a, I, I, a, probably a nothing, just barely something, you know? A seed. I could see it that way. We, we're just a seed. I mean, you know, he's planting us. And we are to grow. And when we come up in heaven, imagine the tree that we're going to be. Glory to God. We can grow here, though. That's our goal. We, we want to start to grow on earth. Amen. Let's turn to Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Let's start out right. This is in the New King James. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Folks, we're nowhere near where we should be. I, I don't like to say that, but we need, we need help. Amen. We need the Holy Ghost to help us get in unity. We have to change some of the things we think about in our lives, in our own lives. We have to, we have to meaning, meaningly, proactively think that we need to be in unity with our brothers and sisters daily. We need to care about our brothers and sisters, what they're doing. We need to think, does he need something? Does my brother or sister need something? I should be proactive in that. And we all need to work on it. We all need to work on it. None of us are perfect. But that's our goal. Why does Paul say this? Fulfill my joy. Go back one, would you? Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, Being of one accord of one mind. Fulfill my joy. Now here I can see Paul's kind of going after it. He's saying, well, I'm going to believe by faith (laughs) that um, I can just giggle and laugh a little bit here. Right? And I can be happy about my life and about the future of the church. Okay? But I want that to, I want my joy to be fulfilled. Amen? And it's going to take some work on your behalf. And we can still fulfill Paul's joy. Amen? We're people of faith. That, was, that word is spirit. That's a spiritual concept. Fulfill my joy by being like-minded. This takes work, folks. This takes effort. This takes casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into obedience of Christ. That's what it takes. It takes casting down the imaginations. Putting a stop to them. 
you're not healed. Shut up! You know what I mean? You don't have enough money. Shut up! Who do you think you are? Healing ain't in your hands. You're a liar! Amen? Those are thoughts that Satan, the enemy, wants us to think. Amen. So, so why does the enemy want to do this to us? Why? His only goal is to distract your mind. If he can take your mind, he can take your life. If he takes your mind, he takes every action. The next step is an action or a word. That's the next step. You start to speak it, and you might as well just forget about it because you're headed that way. There's no doubt about it. So let's fulfill his joy, amen? Let's fulfill his joy, the apostles' joy, the joy that's, that, that, that they had before us, before we've come on earth, those men that have paved the way. Of course they walk by faith because you have to. But it's up to us to walk it out. Amen. We got to walk this thing out. We have to meaning, we have to mindfully be proactive in the morning when I get up. Lord God, I will not think on those things today. Hallelujah, mind, you better listen up here to what I'm saying. Paul is referencing from verse 1 through 27 and uh, 127 through 30 his feelings on how he would like us to imitate him. We need to imitate Paul. Right? Imitate Jesus, of course. I mean, that's who Paul imitated, but Paul coming along, fulfilling the scriptures, and doing what God told him to do, we should follow him as well. His words. Because they're life. They're life. They come from the Holy Ghost. Amen? If you don't believe the word, you might as well just forget it. Jesus didn't say all this word, did he? I mean, he wasn't here on earth when the apostles were walking around laying hands on people. It was when he left that they did the works, right? So that's an example for us. Jesus is gone. You know, the Bible calls us, writ, the, the, what's he say, like living stones. We are living epistles. Check that out. That, that, you may have read that. Can't remember exactly where it's at. We are living epistles. Think about that for a minute. You're a, you're, you're a writing on the wall to somebody. You are a living epistle. Your life and words and actions in Christ are going to last forever. Forever. And those that are coming into the kingdom, when they hear your words, your spirit-filled, life-filled words, like we're hearing from Paul, it's going to bring life to them. You are a, you are a creator. You're, you're, you are a creation that create. You're called to create. That's who you are. Like God, you're called to create. You can speak words. They don't necessarily come. They may be based on this Bible, but they are life-giving words. You may put it a little different than somebody that does in the Bible. But nevertheless, if it's of Christ and if it's in Him, then that word's going to bring life. Amen. There's freedom in Christ, folks. You know there's liberty in Christ? There's liberty in Christ. You know what liberty means? Liberty. That means you're free to roam about the building. Go ahead and walk around. He's not going to tell you to sit there and just stay there. You know, he's not like that. He wants you to move around. He wants you to create things, design things. Promote his word in your own special way. But make sure it's his word. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter 3 8. 1 Peter 3 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind. This is said over and over, folks. I could go, there's, I don't know, there's probably 80 times that this is said in the New Testament. 
talking about being in unity, being, a, being of one mind. And it said almost in every book, every epistle that is written, for the Corinthians, the uh, Ephesians, the Colossians, the Philippians, all of those, he says this to, to be of one mind. All the churches, see that? All the churches, right? Be of one mind. Now, they may be in different locations, but they're of the same mind, right? Can you imagine being together? Yeah. That's God. That's what He wants. We're going to be there one day, amen? But we can strive together now. And this is not, well, I'll try. <laughs> it's got to be more than that. It has to be more than, I'll give it a shot. It has to be, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay, you can't convince me not to do it. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10 in the New King James. Boom. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. <laughs> it's like, well, uh, is it getting through yet? Is it getting through yet? I plead with you. Now, if you're pleading with somebody, man, this means this is serious. Look, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Please help me. Please. Come on, man. Please. Look, man, if you don't do it, something's going to happen. I need you. I need you. Do you get that? I need you. I plead with you. I'm almost tempted to get on my knees. You know what I mean? To, to, to give the picture. Hey, grab your feet. Hey, listen. Brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined. You know what? You, have, you all have probably done some puzzles in your lifetime, right? Puzzles, right? Puzzles, boy. It's that time of year again. Bust out the puzzle. You know? Let's go get a new puzzle you know, and work on that for a while. Have you ever been working on a puzzle when the piece, it was close. I mean, it was so close. Even the color was close, right? But for some, it just didn't fit perfectly. Right? It just doesn't fit. No, I, mm, that ain't, that, yeah, yeah. We're like, mm, 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 mm. that's good. Get another one. I'm doing the sides over here. So, but, but think about that. Perfectly joined. <laughs> this is something we have to work on, folks. That's why he said it over and over. This is something we need to work on here. In this house. Which we can do that. We can do that. Right? We can. God is a God of love and mercy and compassion. Just make sure that we're all walking in love and mercy and compassion. Amen? Let's continue to do that. Because we can do it. Power comes from a core. You know that? That's why they tell you when you're working out, you got to build your core. Because that's what's going to give you your stamina and endurance. Is your core. So that's what we want to build. We want to build a core. Let there be no divisions among you, but you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Well, think about that for a second. Ah, uh, that ain't so bad if you... I'm probably going to step on some toes, but... It ain't so bad if you go have a drink here and there. I mean, shh, everybody drinks. Everybody has a drink here and there, right? No big deal. Is that the same judgment? No, it's not. It could be about different things. Well, I only flip them off when they cut me off because I make it just ticks me off. You know what I mean? Right? Or I only hate the Democrats or Biden because of his actions. I only hate him because of that. No. 
does justifying sin make our judgment fall into unity? Does justifying our own sin? Because you don't know what the other person's going to do. You don't know what they're involved with, honestly. That's why there's a lot of work to be done. There, do you all see that? It takes a lot to be in unity. We, we have to really pursue that and work on that. But he says it so many times in the New Testament that it has to be done. I, it has to be done in order for the works to come. The glorious works that we all long for and want. Amen? I mean, they're going to happen here and there. But boy, they could be really happening. Like undeniably, like, whoa, that must be the church. Of, that must be the Lord, Lord's church there. You know what I mean? So anyway, being of the same judgment. I see how that doesn't go over too well. Judgment's a tough word. Judgment is a tough word. Jesus, the Lord says Jesus judges us. We are judged by the word. Amen. The word is to be our judge. So we're all not perfect. And, and, and that's not what I'm trying to convey here. That we're, 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 I know that. We're not perfect. But the aim is to strive together to be perfect. And if you don't want to try that, then you might as well just forget about it. I mean, you could just go about with some other church or somewhere that just teaches you can do whatever you want. You know, you can be homosexual, come and sit in the front row. You know, we love you. And you can hold your arm around so-and-so. You know, is, is that... Is that righteousness? Is it? To me, that's not. To me, that's not. If I got folks in the back that just walked in and there's a couple lesbians sitting on the front row with their arm around each other because I love them, is that good for these folks back here? Is that how Christ's church is? No. No. That's not how His church is. Okay, I'm going to get off that rabbit trail. Glory to God. The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Acts 17. Is that where we're at? Acts 17. Acts 17, 10. I told you we were going to go through a lot of scripture. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily. To find out whether these things were so. The first thing we need to do as individuals is search the scriptures daily. Amen? Search the scriptures daily. I can preach up here all day long and tell you what I think. And tell you what I say the Lord says to me. But until you search the scriptures daily, you ain't going to know for sure. Amen? So that helps us to get in unity. That helps us to be of one mind. Hey, brother, did you read today? Put you on spot. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of the... Did you read the Bible yesterday? Amen. Brother, did you read the Bible yesterday? Now, as pastors, I'm sure you're not going to go around and say, did you read yesterday? Did you read yesterday? Did you read it? All right, we're all in unity. Right? We should just be doing that. We should just be doing that. If you, you think about it this way. If I'm not reading the Bible... I'm not going to be in unity when I get to church. Okay? If I'm not reading and seeking, I'm not going to be in unity. All right, how about this one? Here's another one. If I allow Satan to tell me a lie, and I dwell on that lie, I'm not in unity. Because i got other brothers and sisters over here who don't believe that. Right? The devil comes along and says, oh, you're a, you're a dope addict. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're not only that, you have, um, you've been immoral, and you, you just, that's not all washed yet. You know what I mean? The blood doesn't, it takes time. It take, well, you lying devil, you don't take no time at all. Amen? He says he comes in and, and cleanses you, right? And makes you perfect before him. But it's going to take some work. Now, I'm not saying... That, that, that everything just, yeah, He cleanses you and everything, but man, it doesn't mean you, you can't cast those thoughts down. You have to. That's part of the work. That's part of fulfilling. The fulfilling of the Word. That's what we're called to do. Fulfill the Word. 
Fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your calling. These Jews, and, and Paul went around, they were chasing him. The Jews were after this man. They hated him. They hated, yeah, they hated him with a hate that says, I would, just, I would like to kill him, but it may, it may make a stir. You know, this sort of hate. The, this is what they think in their bedchambers when they go to bed. Uh, that Paul. Uh, and these people were in unity about their hate toward Paul. I mean, they hated this man to the point of, if he walks down my alley, I just may take him out and then go back to bed with peace in my heart. See what I'm saying? These people hated Paul. But he found some that were willing to go to the Scriptures and find out whether they were true or not. And the next verse, do I have it up there? The next verse. Therefore many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, and prominent women as well as men. So after they searched the Scriptures, they found out that the Word was true, and boom, they were believers. Hallelujah. That's how the Word's supposed to work. You go to the Scriptures, you read it for yourself, and you become a believer. Because God confirms His Word. Amen? He confirms that Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews. Let's turn there. Hebrews 8.10. I told you I had some Scripture. We're getting close to the middle. (laughs) Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind. Wow. This is what God says. I will put their laws. What does it say here? I will will make. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. Says the Lord. Okay. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Next verse? Or did I not give it to you? Oh, it's all right. So the next verse tells you that, they'll, uh, that you will know God personally, okay, individually, which that's today. That, this scripture is for us today. This is happening today. Okay, this is not supposed to happen, right? None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. Amen. Everybody that trusts in the Lord shall know the Lord. Did you receive Jesus as your personal Savior? Then you should know, then the the Lord will make sure that you know Him. Right? He'll make sure of it. If you choose to not listen, to his making sure of it, well, that's on you, right? Here's another sad component. Um, uh, let me say not another, but here is a sad component to the facts. The facts are people are going to go to hell. These are the facts. Jesus said it. If you do not obey the Lord, and if you choose not to walk in his ways, then you will go to hell. Jesus did not say just to blow off some words one day about the way it is. Okay? This is serious. A very serious issue for God. If you disobey me, and if you do not do what I say, then you will go to hell. Many times. Many times. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I'm not the judge of all the earth and the creator of all things to send you to hell. Okay? I didn't say it. What did he say in Matthew chapter 24? Um... I don't know why I'm going off. I, I heard the Holy Spirit talk about this a little bit this morning. And I, I want to be perfectly clear that this isn't an option as a Christian to, to cast down imaginations, to be, a, be in unity 
in one mind and one spirit. These are not just things that Paul throws out there and says, look, try to do this. Okay, guys, I mean, you know, he's God. I mean, just do your best. And that's not how he's putting this out. He's putting this out there as you either cast down the imagination or you're going to be taken out. It may take a little while, okay? It may not happen, cut off, you know, like some of the children of Israel got swallowed up by the earth in one day. Okay, it may not happen like that. But you can better believe that it will happen. Either death, he's, what's Satan? He's a thief, a liar, and a killer, right? He, doesn't, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Those thoughts will either kill you, they will steal from you, or they will destroy you. That's what he's saying. Be of one mind in one spirit together. Because if you don't, Satan will come and he will steal from you, he will kill you, and he will destroy you. As a body, think about that. Either you get in a unity together with one spirit and one mind and the same judgment. <laughs> Thank you for that one, Paul. The same judgment. Be of one mind, one spirit, and the same judgment. Or else, he could have added, Satan will come. He will steal. He will steal your, he will steal your name. He will steal your joy. He will steal your finances. He will steal your health. He will steal your ability to continue. He will steal your job. He will steal from you. He will steal. He will take your food. He will take your clothes. He will take your family. He will take your thoughts. He will take your future. He will take your car. He will take your house. He will take everything that you own. Okay, let's put it that way. How about he will kill you. He will kill your family. He'll kill your dog. He'll kill all the insects and all the bugs, all the animal life around your house. He'll kill the trees, the grass. He'll kill, kill everything. Okay? He'll cause the light not to shine. It'll become dark. The paint will peel off the walls. In fact, the walls will fall down. Okay? The rodents will eat the wood. Okay? If you don't. It's pretty harsh, isn't it? Wow, really? <laughs> wow. Oh, golly. You're not that serious, are you, Paul? No. Are you serious? <laughs> Paul, I could just see it. Y'all need to read this one because I don't see how we're going to do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, he, he even tells them in other books, hey, make sure they read this script, they, these books, right? Read this letter. Paul tells them, read this other letter I wrote. But all the letters say the same thing. They all say this. They all say this. Be of the same mind. Be of the same mind. In Philippians 2, 1 through 4, I'm going to go back. You don't have to go there. Philippians 2, 1 through 4, the mind means to exercise your mind or to entertain it. To exercise your mind or entertain your mind. Right? We all love to be entertained, i got to admit. Entertainment's great, right? It entertains the mind. Yeah, I love being entertained. I would, you know, I could sit back and be entertained for long, for hours. You know, entertainment's great. Good entertainment, you know. We want some good entertainment. Let's go out and watch a good movie. I haven't seen a movie in a while, right? <laughs> I know. Hopefully they let us go back. With it. I, th I think some of them are open, nevertheless. But entertain, entertain your mind. How do we do this? How do you entertain your own mind? Think about it. Well, number one, you get up in the morning and you read the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, right? That we all have, by the way. You get up and you read the Bible first thing. First. Before I say I love you, honey. Okay? All right? Before, what do you want? Do you want some coffee? Before that, get up and read the Bible. 
The Bible will entertain your mind. Amen? The Word will entertain you in a good way. It will keep you entertained throughout your day. Amen? Read the Word. So that's one way to entertain your mind. Read the Word. (laughs) Pretty simple. Paul could have said, entertain yourselves, read this letter every day. That should be a gimme. Okay? We know that now. Nevertheless, we know that now. So there's no excuse for us. You know, the Bible says there's no excuse for them that know His Word. There's no excuse. But Jesus, I had to go to the bathroom. No, I'm not getting that personal. But Jesus, you know, I had a lot going on, and and uh, you know, I just, I, I'm sorry, I forgot. Well, I'm sorry then, because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Every day. Every day. Satan will come every day, and even more so because you're in the Word. Isn't that something? Dear God. So you're putting me in harm's way? Not necessarily. But it sounds that way. (laughs) Right? Right? Not necessarily. Because the Word will protect you. See, God wants us to act by faith, walk by faith, do things by faith, cast down imaginations by faith, get up and read the Word by faith. You may not feel like it, but you better do it. Amen? I want to come into agreement with my brothers and sisters, not because... You know, I want something special, but in, in a way I do. But I, I, I want to agree with them because that's what the Word says to do. I don't fully understand it, but I, I want that. That's what I want. Okay? I want to walk in unity with my brothers and sisters of the same mind. I can see the Holy Spirit probably speaking to some of you about your mind. Oh, I don't know if I want my brother and sister to know that. Right? I'm not too sure about that. Hmm. Think of it is, you don't have to tell us everything. You know, nobody has to know everything. The key is, is to seek the Lord with all your heart, soul, passion of your heart, with all energy of your being, and with every thought that is within you. If a thought comes that you question, here's a good one, because this is something that you might want to know. Well, I don't know if that's a bad thought or a good thought. Write it off as a bad one. All right? Just write it off. It's better to be sure than to question it and be dragged off into oblivion on some stupid rabbit trail that just doesn't need to happen. So go somewhere you're sure of in your mind. Amen? Always take a sure thing. What's the, what does he, he say? A bird, a, bird, a, two, a bird in the hand is worth more, more than two in the bush. Right? Because you know that. You know that. That's why it's always better to take that one because that's, that's the better way. That's the way I see it anyway. That's my own view. Moving on. Where are we? Philippians 2 verse 2. Is that where we're at? No, 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 no. We're down at uh, 2 Corinthians 13. Boom, right there. <laughs> He's like, there it is. All right. Finally, brethren, farewell. Become complete. He's saying, hey, I'm going to leave for a while, but you got some work to do. You got some work to do here. Don't forget, become complete. How do you do? Become is a word of action, right? It takes, that's moving on. Yeah, right. You're, you're headed somewhere. You have to become, right? I have to become something. I'm becoming. Become complete. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Oh, there it is again. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Be of one mind again. Hmm. Wow, he must really mean that. He says it so much. I mean, you know, do you think these people needed to be of one mind? You know? I mean, was there a need here for the church? Obviously. Obviously. Live in peace. And the God, there, here's the... The, the, the good part, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. So there you go. How about some promises? And the God of peace will be with you. 
Amen? I want the God of peace with me. I choose the God of the, the way to get the peace. I choose that way. I don't want to, uh, no, I, I'd like to go kick his door down and take him out by the, you know, <laughs> grab him by the nap of the neck and drag him out into the street. But <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't righteous, is it? You know what I mean? All right, moving on, moving on. We're going to point two, point two of our lesson, sermon, teaching today. Having the, the first point was having the same mind of unity, and I think you all got that, right? We as a body need to start thinking about these things. This is important. This is vitally important for us as a body. We need to be in unity, period. When you're in unity and you come in, there ain't no question about what's fixing to happen in this house. You hear me? Because it's fixing to, the, the Holy Ghost fixing to move in some Serious ways, if we're in unity, because he can flow in and out of every one of us, right? Imagine, you know what the Bible says about those that prophesy? Let two or three prophesy, you know, and then let you know. I mean, can you, can you prophecy over here, prophecy over here, prophecy over here. Go ahead and prophesy. Go ahead, you, 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 and you. I mean, can you imagine the the fulfillment of the word? Point two, having the mind of Christ individually, right? Individually. We all are individuals, and we will all answer to the Lord individually. We will answer corporately as a church, but we will answer individually as well. The foundation scripture for this, point number two, is 1 Peter 1, 13 through 19. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope. There's a good one. Rest your hope. Isn't that good? Rest your hope. Rest it. Don't get all uptight and worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Don't get all uptight and worried about, I mean, the next few minutes or the next hour or later on today. But rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What is that revelation? That's happening right now, folks. Right now. You're getting revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now. Rest your hope fully on that revelation. This is good stuff. This is the Word. The truth will set you free. Remember that movie? And the truth will set you free. He was liar, liar. Okay. <laughs> Nevertheless, the truth will set you free. Right? Search the script. They search the Scriptures daily. Why? Because the truth had a, had a mission for them. And it does for you too. It'll set you free. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust is in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Wow. You know... We all do a lot of conduct, I think. Right? In all your conduct, be holy. Because it is written, for I am holy. The Lord is a holy God, and He hates sin. He hates it. Sin is separation from God and from His life and from his, your future in Christ. Sin will keep that from happening for you. Sin will keep the blessing away from your house. You notice that I didn't say sins, right? Sin. Now, I'm not the judge. You judge yourselves. Let the Word judge you. But to me, it sounds pretty serious. Either you be holy as I am, 
or you're going to allow something to happen in your life that's not going to be good for you and it's not going to please me, is what he's saying. I would work on those things. I would work on those things. Gird up the loins. Isn't that a good one? Gird up the loins. What are we having? Pork chops? What are they? Pork loins? We're gonna, how are we supposed to, what do you mean gird up the loins? That's, what, kind of a, what kind of a saying is that? Am I supposed to pull my pants up? <laughs> right? You see the young kids running around, they're just, they got a hold of their pants. He must be girding up his loins. <laughs> I was when Missy and I were driving yesterday. I was like, man, that boy needs a belt. I almost want to stop and ask him, hey, do you need a belt? Because I'll buy you one. I mean, you want to you wanna hold them up all the time? I don't get it. That's suspenders. Yeah, do you need some suspenders? Yeah. Gird up the loins of what? Of your mind. This is an action word. Gird. Right? It is. It's an action word. Gird up the loins of your mind. Go to the, don't we have that in the new, um, the passion. Go to the passion. This will help you a little bit. So then prepare your hearts and minds for action. Because action is what we want, right? I mean, God loves action. In fact, I think he created action movies. He started, God, action movies, I mean, doosh, doosh, shooting and running and car wrecks and all this you know, this good stuff. Action movies, man. Prepare your mind for action. Why? Why? Amen. Why would you want to have to prepare your mind for action? A lot of us come in here, we ain't prepared for action. We're prepared to sit down. I'm prepared to sit down and listen. I'm prepared, brother. I ain't prepared to run, jump, shout, you know. Some of us need to get prepared, including me. I need work there. Prepare yourself. Stay alert. Fix your hope firmly on the marvelous grace that's coming to you. Here's another scripture that's talking about the now, folks. The grace is coming to you now. The word is coming to you now. Live and in person, right? That's the grace that's being brought to you. And you can have that grace every morning when you read. Think about it. Say, I'm fixing to prepare my mind for action today. Amen? Amen. I'm preparing myself for action. That is good. That's good. That's good. For when Jesus Christ is unveiled, what's that mean? A greater measure of grace will be released to you. When Jesus Christ is unveiled, Jesus Christ is unveiled, folks. He is already unveiled. Amen. There is no veil. You and Jesus are, can talk face to face. There's nothing separating y'all. Okay? A greater measure of grace as God's obedient children never again shape your lives by the desires that you followed when you didn't know any better. Instead, shape your lives to become like the one the Holy One, by the way, who called you. For Scripture says you are to be holy because I am holy. Since you call on His name as your Heavenly Father, the impartial judge who judges according to each one's works, amen, think about that. The, I said partial, I meant impartial judge. Live each day with holy awe and reverence throughout your time on earth. There's your, there's your guidelines right there. For if you know that your lives were ransomed once and for all from the empty and futile way of life handed down from generation to generation, it was not a ransom payment of silver and gold, which eventually perishes, but the precious blood of Christ, who like a spotless, unblemished lamb, was sacrificed for us. My brother is a spotless, 
unblemished sacrifice. Spotless and unblemished. That means there's no room for blemishes or spots. You understand? We're supposed to go after perfection. Don't allow those things to come in and take away what God wants for you. I'd be angry. I'd be angry if you told me I was sick all the time, devil. I'd be angry about it. I'd be angry if you told me I never had enough. Or I'm never going to have enough. That would make me angry. We need to be angry. Second Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, devil, by the way. Okay? But God has given me a spirit of power, of love, and a mind that's sound and proactive and diligent and able and can do all things and thinks good things and is mature and able and can conquer mountains and can walk together in unity. My mind is alert, able. My mind is hearing. It's clear. It hears the Word of God. That's all it hears. It doesn't hear the lie. Because I have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word mind in the Strong's means a disciplined and self-controlled mind. Quickly, we must move on. Hallelujah. A willing mind. We got to keep going. Bear with me for another 10 minutes. 2 Thessalonians 2.2. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of who? Amen. I have the mind of my brother Jesus Christ who walked on this earth 2,000 years ago. I have the same mind as he does. When Satan comes to tempt me to throw myself down and the angels will bear me up, I, tell, I speak the word and say, no, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. When Satan comes to me and says, you're sick and dying, you shall not tell me a lie. The Bible says I'm healed by the blood of Jesus. End of story. Now, move your mind into a proactive state and start speaking scriptures or reading them very quickly and diligently. And do not let Satan come in again immediately and try to steal that word. You've got to move on it. A willing mind. Amen? Scripture, 2 Corinthians 8, 12. For there is first a willing mind. This is talking... I'm not going to pull this out of context, but listen to this. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. So first you have to have a willing mind, right? Will God turn you away? We don't know God to be a God that's going to push you away. That's not who God is. Amen? He's a God that says, if you're willing, I will do it. If you're willing to get up and read the Word every morning, I will, make, I will make you strong in your mind. If you're willing to cast down thoughts and imaginations throughout your day, then if you're willing, I will help you do it. Amen? Amen. Lord, let's say it together. Lord, we are willing. We are willing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. In the message, think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave. Became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death and the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Having this mind, this mind that Jesus had here on earth was a humble, receiving mind. It was a mind that said, I will do what my Father says to do and I will work at it. 
It was a mind that says, I'm going to a cross by faith for people that will not listen to me. But I'm going to do it anyway. I don't feel healed, but I'm going to speak the word anyway. I'm not going to let Satan lie to me about who, what I am and who I am. I don't care what anything else says about me. I don't care what it looks like, what it feels like, what they say. It does not matter. I'm not going to let it in. It's not, it's not the truth. It's a lie. It is a lie from the pit. Moving on quickly. Ephesians 4, 17. And so I insist, and God backs me up on this, that there be no going along with the crowd, the empty-headed, mindless crowd. <laughs> yeah, there are some mindless crowds out there for sure. They've refused for so long to deal with God that they've lost touch, not only with God, but with reality. They can't think straight anymore. <laughs> That's it's kind of funny, isn't it? Feeling no pain, they let themselves go into sexual obsession, addicted to every sort of perversion. The crowd. Do you think do you think Paul doesn't know what's going on? Do you think that Paul doesn't get the revelation? I mean, you could see it today. It's obvious. It's obvious. I mean, when we were sinners, we acted like sinners, didn't we? So we know. That's a give me. But it goes even further with these people. They, they're way off in it. Deeply consumed by the enemy. Ephesians 17 the spirit, okay, where are we at? 17, okay. But that is no life for you. You learn Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to Him. You've been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have, have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. <laughs> After today, folks, come on, come on. Since we don't have the excuse of ignorance, everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life, has to go. It's rotten through and through. Isn't that good? Get rid of it. And then take on an entirely new way of life. Entirely new. There's nothing left of it. There's nothing left. A life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct. As you, as God accurately reproduces His character in you. Hallelujah. The spirit of your mind. The spirit of your mind. The spirit of your mind. The New King James. The New King James says, back on verse uh, 23. Is it back one or did you have that one? Right there. And be renewed in the spirit. Of your mind. How do you renew the spirit of your mind? It's the Holy Ghost, folks. He will renew your spirit. The spirit of your mind. I would hunger for the Holy Ghost. Plead. Plead. With God for the Holy Ghost. Being thoughtful. In the Webster's Dictionary, means to meditate or careful, careful reasoning thoughts. So be thoughtful of these things. Be mindful. In 1 Timothy 1, 3 through 7, you have that one? 1, 3 through 7. You not, you not have it? I'll read it. We're almost done. Let me finish up here. The good, the good. We're about to finish with some good, good stuff. So stay, stay with me. There you go. As I urged you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may change. Charge some that they teach no other doctrine. 
nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. Folks, it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. We need the mind of Christ. Amen. We need the mind of Christ. We need unity. There has to be a strength because we all are all of one mind. It, it, and this isn't some cult or some thing that, you know, we're, we're not trying to become some, you know, vigilante cult. That No, this is the body of Christ. This is God. This is His desire. His desire for us to walk in that mind, in His mind. Be mindful of Him. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Boom. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man or a mature person, I put away childish things. This understood as a child, this is your thinking. This is the way you perceive and conceive and, and re- receive, right? This is your understanding, the way, you, the, the way that things come to you and the way that you make things go away in your mind. So we are to be mature people of one mind, of one spirit. Could you imagine if we were all, now let me give you an example real quick. The chariots of light, let, let me tell you what happens as a chariot, okay, the motorcycle ministry that we're involved with. When I go to these outreaches and I get in there with those chariots, there is an anointing that is undeniable. It is, it is immediate and it's undeniable and it's something that's tangible. You feel it. It's something that changes you. It changes you. The reason this is the reason it's like that is because we're all of the same mind. We all have the same purpose. We all know what we're there for, right? When we come together in worship, we all know what we're here for. And if you don't, maybe it needs to be reiterated. We're here for healing, right? We're here for love. We're here for prosperity, and wholeness, and strength. We're here to help each other. Every time we meet, that's what we're here for. We're here to tell each other that, do you need anything? Is there anything I can, that's a, (laughs) we need work, folks. Is there anything that you need that I can help you with? Yeah, it may cost you something. It may cost you some money or some time, some energy. But we need to do it. We need to. Let's finish with this. 1 Timothy 1, 18. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. Hallelujah. What's 19? You got that one? Go to 19 in the Passion. So, or go to that one in the Passion. We'll read it real quick. Hallelujah. Vince, can you play some mu- quick music real quick? Thank you. You got the passion? Just some soft stuff, Vince. There you go. That, that, let's read that. So, Timothy, my son, I'm entrusting you with this responsibility. There's a word. That's a good word. Listen. Listen. In keeping with the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life and are now in the process of fulfillment. In this great work of ministry, keeping up with the prophecies spoken over you, 
With this encouragement, use your prophecies as weapons as you wage spiritual warfare by faith and with a clean conscience. For there are many who reject these virtues and are now destitute of the faith. Wage a good warfare, folks. Wage a good warfare. We're going to pray here in a minute. We're going to pray. That we, that we become mindful of what we're in here, folks. Of what we're dealing with on a day-to-day basis. We need to be mindful of each other every day. We're too busy in life. You understand? This has to be something we've got to be proactive at. We need to be mindful of one another. That way, when we come to this house... Miracles will break out. Do you hear me? This is a word from the Lord to you today. If you become mindful of one another throughout your week, when you come to this house, miracles will happen. That's a word from the Lord. If you're mindful of your thoughts throughout your day, if you're mindful that Satan is about, he's not about to, he's Right now, trying to attack you. And he wants to attack your mind. Okay? That's where he wants to take you out at first. Because then, you'll just start saying it. You know? We need to be aware of these things, folks. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We need to be aware. Heavenly Father, make us aware. Make us aware of you. Declare that. Declare that within yourself. I have an awareness of what God is doing in my life. I have an awareness in my mind. I'm alert and proactive. My thoughts are clear. I'm a holy person. I live a holy life unto the Lord. More and more I become aware of these things. By faith, I take hold of these things. By faith, I have the mind of Christ. By faith, I'm going to commit to thinking more about my brothers and sisters. I'm a giver. I can give. The scripture says, first, if there be a willing mind, amen, will God reject you? No, because he's good. He's a good father. He won't reject you if you're willing. Amen. We have the mind of Christ. Our thoughts, our thoughts daily think about him. Our thoughts think about the word. Our thoughts, they're powerful, folks. Your thoughts, man, they can make or break you. They can make you sick or they can make you well. You choose. They can make you wealthy, healthy, or disgusted and broke. It only takes one thought to really mess things up. That's why we need to be on guard. We need to be careful, proactive. Read the Word, right? Establish our faith. Rest fully on the hope. See Jesus. Get His revelation. The grace and the mercy that He's poured out upon us. When you read His Word, I know you're going to see it. Because He he shows us. Amen? He shows us.
Hilevandro vashitro do, helebore me shuvara nase do, lagere na shidre besede, levon sandra vasiko ven me rono, lavadiro ne shedro bo, levasi na reno sende levondre de sho, lavakior en me sote, vatsti dondre vansele. Vai di do scendra di scorre ben. Hier le vat selvon, for I say to you, there's more coming, there's more coming. I have more for you, I have more for you. If you want more of me, Just run to me, plead, plead to me. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that the word that's been engrafted into us today, the word, that holy word, that righteous, good word, Father, we thank you that it's fallen on good soil. Father, that the seed grows and that we become mature in you, that we are a mature church, a mature house, mature people of faith who are serious about you, Lord. We thank you for it. Holy Spirit, we worship you and we bless you. We thank you that you're doing it and we receive it. Amen. And all the people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That was a, what a wonderful message. And I don't think that Dustin even knows that it's a great, great segue into this study that we're about to undertake as a church. Because, you know, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, there's nothing that you can do in your physical body to wage this kind of warfare. But he says it's mighty through God to what? To the pulling down of strongholds. And God, many, a couple years back, and we'll, we'll look at those maybe next week, but he gave me two definitions of what a stronghold is. And what you're going to find in this study is that the essence of spiritual warfare, for the most part, is the battle of the mind. It's not all this goofy stuff that people walk up on this hill and throw this stuff down and shout at the clouds and, and cry and weep and pound on Tonga boards. And I mean, you know, just, there's just been all kinds of weird stuff.